experience in one piece. You've got the very best guide. Kelly! And the greatest driver. Dean. They're the best. I love them. Even though Kelly owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Oh, that's right, Jimmy. We do have a few safety rules to go over. First, if you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency, if you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or if you have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab that red emergency cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I will be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, we ask that you remain seated, keeping your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. The tour is on private property, so if at any time during the tour you drop your phone or you just can't wait to use the restroom, just pull that red cord and remain seated. Now be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden tram movements, fire effects, and many water effects. I repeat, there's lots of water. There's lots of water. So have your cameras and cell phones out for photo opportunities, but keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. And guard your churros, that's very important. And also for your safety and the safety of those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while on board the tram. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Now we are leaving our theme park behind. We're taking you into the heart of our production studio right now. We're gonna make our way down our timeline and on either side of the tram you will see posters that represent just a few of the thousands of movies we've made over the years. Our very first movie was Damon and Pythias. It's right there. It's classic. You've probably never heard of it. It was a long time ago. Now, our studio was started in 1912, so it's been around a while. These movies go back a long, long way. We've been doing this a minute. Carl Lemley is our founder. He started it in 1912, opened it to the public March 15, 1915. You will see some movies as we get further down the timeline that you are more familiar with, and maybe even some of your favorites. I see some that have definitely influenced my life. Yep, definitely. Now, we are making our way into our production studio. We are our own city here at Universal Studios. We have our own facilities here. As a matter of fact, as we make our way down the timeline, we are coming to our very real working fire station. Right here on the right-hand side as we turn this corner, it's a real working fire station. This is not a set that has real working firefighters inside. We also have our own police station, our own medical facilities, post office, zip code. We are an entire city dedicated to the art of filmmaking, just like Carl Lemley dreamed about all those years ago. He called it the strangest little city in the world, and we called him Uncle Carl. We were that fond of him. Now, our lot is... 400 acres. It's very, very large. In fact, we share with other production studios to come in and uh, film here if they're not blessed with the amount of acreage that we have. We're divided into two parts. We have a front lot and a back lot. And we're taking you into the front lot right now where you're going to see a lot of construction around because we're always building things. In fact, we are very excited about the Super Nintendo World coming in 2023. You'll see some construction right here. Related to that, you can check our social media and our website for details on that. Now, on our left-hand side, you're going to see Sound Stage 12. It is our largest and most historic sound stage. It is almost 30,000 square feet, and it has held some of the largest film sets in film history, like Dracula's Castle, 
Frankenstein's lab. Scarface's mansion was in there. They fit the entire town of Louisville inside that building. It was recently home to The Voice, and one of the coaches of The Voice, Ms. Kelly Clarkson, also films up in the left-hand side, in that direction down there in Soundstage 1. She films not one, not two, but three shows with us. She films the Kelly Clarkson show down there. Now, on our left, in stages 2019 and 18 right here, this is recently home to Bel Air, which is a dramatic reimagining of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You remember that show from the 90s? Well, this is the dramatic version of that, and it's happening inside those sound stages. It's being executive produced by Will Smith. Now, here in sound stages 17 and 16 on our left, this is home to the second season of HBO Max show Hacks, starring Emmy Award-winning actress Jean Smart. They are in their second season, and you'll notice that there are very high, very large doors on the sides of those sound stages. Now, those doors are called elephant doors, and they need to be very big because they load in and out giant pieces of sets. When they are making room for a new episode or even a new series to move in, if we're not actively filming, we're in a state of constant transition. Now, off on our left-hand side, you'll see Soundstage 21. This was recently home to Saved by the Bell, which is another reboot of a 90s comedy. It was also home to six seasons of Superstore, starring America Ferrera and Ben Feldman. And it's been home to some big movies over the years. Apollo 13 filmed inside there. It was also home to the sneezing dinosaur in Jurassic Park. They filmed that scene right inside that building. Now you're gonna hear me talk about a lot of television today. Our television history goes back clear to 1939. We make a lot of TV here. We've been making TV ever since then. You might see some old classics on your screen, maybe a few favorites. Now, the show Kenan, starring Kenan Thompson, Chris Redd, and Don Johnson. You guys remember Kenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live, Good Burger, one of the nicest guys in Hollywood. Now, these buildings look a little bit different. These sound stages are not just empty, plain boxes on the outside, and that's because they have dressing rooms and production offices in the front of the building. That's why they have windows in the front, and they film more toward the back. 
Now, Soundstage 22 was originally christened the Will and Grace Soundstage after the Emmy Award winning show that filmed its revival seasons there. <laughs> the very first thing to film there was in 2016. It was Hairspray Live. Now, for Hairspray Live, they filmed it live, so it was happening as they were um, putting it on TV. So, those actors actually had to do the scenes inside, and then during commercial breaks, they would get out and run over to our Metropolitan sets to film the exterior scenes over there. Then they had to run back over to the interior scenes back in the soundstage. Now, you see that big cityscape right there on that wall. That marks the edge of our Metropolitan sets. Our Metropolitan sets are about a four acre section of our back lot. And that can look like any large city in any time period in any part of the world that we needed to. It's a very popular section, so we won't get a chance to go down it today because they've actually built the uh, obstacle course for American Ninja Warrior right down the center of our New York street. They film at night there, and they do the obstacle course right down the center. But it's, it's been used in so many things. Two different Spider-Man slung webs down our New York street as well. Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Captain America from Captain America First Avenger. He hung out on that street. Dirty Harry. Made, made lucky days happen right on that street right there. It was also used as Chicago for the Blues Brothers. They had a big scene where they dropped a car into a hole in the pavement. Now they filmed that right there on our New York when Street. When the Kinto fell and you saw it land and make this big hole in the street, that was on the back lot. You dropped it from a crane. You dig like that in Chicago. You... <laughs> When people ask me of all of the movies I've ever done, which was the most satisfying and the most fun, I've got to say Blues Brothers. We got to sing, we got to dance, got to drive and train with the best stunt people in the world, and, and got to be an actor and a writer. So it was a good piece of work. Danny called John America's guest because there's two walking to anybody's house. During the shooting of the movie, John was missing, we couldn't find him. Danny went off looking for him. We saw a light on in this one house that knocked on the door. I said, oh, sir, we're doing a movie down here. We're looking for one of our actors. Oh, John, yeah, he's on my couch. He came in, he had a snack a couple hours ago. He's sleeping. He was America's guest. I mean, literally that. Now, they are filming that scene right here down New York Street where they currently have that large container right there, that is where the American Ninja Warrior is happening. That street has also been London and Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. They had a big car chase down the center of that street. Now the reason they come here for those scenes, Blues Brothers, they filmed on location in Chicago for much of it. For Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw, they also filmed on location. I'm sorry, did I say they filmed on location in London for Blues Brothers? I meant Chicago. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. They filmed on location in London, but they both came here for the big car scenes. Now it's much easier to film in a controlled environment right here without a lot of city things happening. Extra people, extra cars that you have to keep into, under control. It's a lot safer, a lot more controlled environment to come here. And you don't have to deal with city officials that might get mad if you dig a big hole in the middle of their street or have a car chase that crashes into other cars or buildings. Much easier to do that here. And this area is very usable. You'll see the beautiful brick on there, brick and stone. Now we, instead of using brick and stone, we tend to use foam, foam rubber, fiberglass, and plastic because it looks nice, but it's a lot less expensive to install. And it's also a lot easier to change out if you need to change the area up. So all that beautiful brick and stone that you see is not real. And that happens in the movies. Not everything is real before your eye a lot. Now you can get a look at the American Ninja Warrior set being built right there as we skirt our way past our concrete jungle and into the heart of our real jungle right here. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to direct movies. I saw that movie on TV when I was about eight or nine years old and I wanted to become a movie. I like films that just take you away from your real life and sweep you up in the nature. Kong literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. It's like a thrill for the universe and life in the back of the skyline. It's great to have you on the fly. Now, we have 
created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet, but just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Skull Island. I'm just going to remind everybody to please remain seated and hold on tight to those belongings because things can get a little bumpy here on Skull Island. We really put a lot of food into the character and personality of and he's so much more than a monster. In fact, he's not a monster, even though know, he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. The most important feature of Kong are his eyes. Kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive, they're, they're full of emotion. His eyes are like a window into his personality and his heart. He's had um, an enormous number of encounters with his foes, the T-Rexes and the various dinosaurs on Skull Island, so he's been beaten up, scarred, you know, chewed up, spat out by these dinosaurs at various times, and he, he wears the scars of a lot of ancient battles. Really good at doing digital. 
residual effects. Now as we make our way down this hill and up the other hill, you will get another glimpse down our New York Street right here into our Metropolitan sets where they have filmed many car chases. Now car chases like Fast and Furious presents Hobson Shaw and also Chicago, when it was Chicago for Blues Brothers. Those have a lot of picture cars in them. Picture cars are very good at setting the mood, the time and the place. They can uh, make it look more exciting in an action sequence. And we have a lot of picture cars here at Universal Studios. We love them all. Look out! The big ones. of picture cars. In fact, if you start to look on your left-hand side, we're going to start with Kit from the 2008 Knight Rider series. And he sits right next to Magnum P.I.'s red Ferrari. Now that red Ferrari is a very beautiful, fast-looking vehicle, but it's actually a Volkswagen engine in that red Ferrari. Don't tell anybody. We have some Back to the Future vehicles, some Flintstones cars. Those are very fuel efficient. And if you're a wizard who loves muggles, have a Harry Potter vehicle fresh from the Whomping Willow. We also have the Jeep and the Gyrosphere from Jurassic World. Now notice that the Gyrosphere has no glass bubble around it. That's because glass is a reflective surface and if we put glass around the Gyrosphere you would have seen the film crew standing around filming the shot reflected in the glass and that would have made the dinosaurs feel bad if you were watching the film crew instead of them. So we add it in post-production. That's when we add digital effects. Now we also passed a tank, that Bradley fighting vehicle back there. That is a very tough looking vehicle, but that's actually plywood and PVC pipe. So you wouldn't want to take that into battle, but it is a lot easier to move that from one location to another because it's much more lighter weight than a real tank. And it's also less expensive to blow up because let's face it, in the movies we really like to blow things up. Now that brings us to another part of our back lot. I'm gonna have this gentleman introduce it to you. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. Now, the set pieces that you see around us are from the original trilogy of Jurassic Park films directed by Steven Spielberg. We love dinosaurs here. As a matter of fact, we usually keep them... Oh, huh. that's interesting. Well, we usually keep them right in those cages, but it looks like they're out and about today, wandering about. So keep your eyes peeled. We have them fairly well trained. They hardly ever nibble on humans anymore, which is good news for us. Oh, here they are. Wow. They were really excited to see you guys. Now we do need to We have another Jurassic Park film coming this summer in June, Jurassic World Dominion, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, if you've watched those Jurassic Park films, you know that weather played a very important role in them. In fact, in the first Jurassic Park film, the hurricane was a major plot point. Now, weather is very good at setting the mood in a movie. If you have a scary movie like Jurassic Park and there is a rainstorm, well, it makes the scene more suspenseful. On the other hand, if you have a romantic movie and there's a rainstorm, it makes the scene more intimate, more romantic. I mean, how many kissing scenes have we seen in the rain? A lot, a lot of kissing scenes in the rain. Now here in glorious Southern California, well, we can't rely on the rain to happen whenever we want it to. Oh, and it's wonderful, isn't it? The only problem is that sometimes in the movies, that means that we have to make our own. Now in the end, it's better because we wouldn't want regular old rain, we're Hollywood. 
We want beautiful Hollywood rain. That's why we make our own trees and our own plants too, as you'll see around us. Now we're gonna take you into a part of our back lot we call Old Mexico, which is where we can show you how we make the rain for the movies. Now you're going to see some glorious cacti on our left-hand side. Those were also made for the movies by us. We like to make our own stuff. We're good crafters. There's an electrical storm coming. It's a beautiful effect. And if you want actual rain to happen, you know, Stevie Nicks says, it's not going to happen when it's raining. Isn't that funny? We use what we call an overhead sprinkler, which shoots the water straight up into the air so that it falls back down to the ground naturally. It's a beautiful effect. Drops bigger so that it registers more on camera. We might even shine a light through the rain so the water reflects the light shows up a little better. This area was used for Lady Gaga's Judas video. It was also used for the film Big Fat Liar starring Frankie Muniz, Paul Giamatti, and Lady Gaga. It's a beautiful event. And the best thing about it is that we can tell exactly when to stop. And that way we don't have to face little problems like, oh, we got a little problem. We've got some flesh. Here. And back in the day, you could make six films right next to each other. There was no sound in movies. So you could make a film right next to another film and not disturb them. In fact, Carl Lindley used to have audiences in. You could sit on bleachers, cheer for the good guys, boo the bad guys. You got a sack lunch, all for the low, low price of 25 cents. Oh, those were good days. Now, we are about halfway through our tour right now. So I just want to remind everybody to remain seated. The studio is on private, private property, so if at any time during the tour you drop your phone, or you just can't wait to use the restroom, just pull that right there. Thank you. Now, if you look off to our left-hand side as we turn this corner, you will see our newest sound stages. The sound stage 24 was home to The Voice, is usually home to The Voice, but currently it's being taken over by the American Song Contest, which is hosted by Kelly Clarkson and Snoop Dogg. It is a live competition where representatives from each state to get together to see who gets voted best hit song. Now, it is our version of the uh, hit in Europe called Eurovision, if you're familiar with that, and that's all happening right over there. And in front of those sound stages is our Park Lake area. Now, Park Lake is probably most recognizable as the Amazon from our 1954 3D creature feature, the creature from the Black Lagoon. 
It was also used in our lavish musical showboat, which starred Paul Robeson and was directed by James Whale. And James Whale was also at the helm for many of our monster movies, movies like Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein, The Old Dark House. He directed those movies, and those movies were made in our next location, which is called Little Europe. We call it Little Europe because it can look like any European country simply by changing the language on the signs. And as we make our way up this cobblestone street, you may be thinking to yourself that it also looks like the afterlife because it's where we film the exterior boot place scenes. You, Eleanor Shellstra, are dead. Come on. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this during the good place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. <laughs> Maybe it's not all that bad. How can I help you? What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Just a couple of weeks ago for the Mysterious Benedict Society. This area has been using everything from the Muppets movie to Buffy the Vampire Slayer and was Genovia and Princess Diaries 2. This is where Grand Camp would be used to come out for Cinderella, but it's probably best known for our monster movies. Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, they all hung out right there. They were a tight knit group. Now, if you've watched Frankenstein, you're a fan of monster movies, you might know that Boris Karloff very famously played Frankenstein's monster. He was not the first actor offered that role. The offer actually went to this gentleman. I am Dracula. That is Mr. Bela Lugosi, star of Dracula. He was a pretty big deal back in the day. So they offered him the role first, but he turned it down. You see, Bella Lugosi was a very serious actor, and Frankenstein's monster didn't have very many lines. He just grunted a lot. He didn't say much. So Bella Lugosi didn't feel that it would be a big enough role for him. And the role ultimately went to Boris Karloff. But look at him. Isn't he magnificent? Oh, what a looker. She loves him. And who can blame her? Now, I'm going to remind everybody to please stay seated because we're going to sneak you on to a hot set. And when I say hot set, I don't mean that it's on fire, although we do that in the movie sometimes. When I say hot set this time, I mean that it's all set up and ready to go. So when the director yells action, we can just start filming right away. Now, this is set up to look like a BART station in San Francisco. It was used in an episode of Bones starring David Boreanaz and Emily Deschanel. It was also used in Beverly Hills Cop 3. Now, when as you look around, you'll notice all the attention to detail paid, from the posters to the newspaper stands to the turnstiles. All of that little detail is important because without that, this looks like a big empty box. That's what a soundstage looks like without anything inside. Big empty boxes are just not that exciting to look at. So we add all of those little details. That's the job of a set designer and a set dresser. That makes it look like this is actually a
was inspired by one of our 1970s disaster films. So you know what? We're going to take a change of pace. I want to celebrate those stunt performers, right? I want us to see an honest-to-goodness stunt show. So we're actually going to be heading to a new location called Amity Island, ladies and gentlemen. For the stunt show, we're going to watch. We're not going to participate in. I'm tired of being stressed out. We're just going to sit back and relax. So make sure you stay seated and hang on to your belongings. Here's a little taste of Amity Island here. To your left-hand side, it does say the beach is closed, all part of the show. See, Amity Island, if you don't recognize it, is the fictitious town where the movie Jaws did a whole lot of filming. The actual town they filmed in was called Martha's Vineyard. It's on the East Coast. Now, they closed down Martha's Vineyard, or portions of it, for Jaws, and they turned it into Amity Island. Well, today we are in luck. It looks like we are going to be able to see them. So we're coming forward here, ladies and gentlemen, to check out Amity Island to your right. And today, for our tour, they're going to have a little stunt show for us to enjoy, just like the old days. So sit back, relax, and watch two amazing performers recreate this fantastic scene from the movie Jaws. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Uh, looks like stay seated, please. Uh, usually it gets out of the water there and into the boat. I, I think something might have gone a little wrong. That's okay. Uh, do you guys see the shark out there? Do you see it? I don't see it. Uh, keep an eye on that yellow buoy, please. It does have some shark bait on it. Let me know if it starts to move. I think I have to call this in real quick. Uh, studio tour. This is Garrett's tour. I think something just here. Hi, we're at Amity Island. Uh, yeah, Amity Island. tour today. That's what it feels like when you meet a celebrity, your heart races, you want to take a picture, you're not sure if you should. Bruce is very talented as you can see. He is the only shark to your left now. He is the only shark in the known universe that can swim backwards. Now it gets him a lot of work, but I'm going to tell you, he is not the same shark that Steven Spielberg used in the movie Jaws. They get confused all the time. Here's the way to tell the difference. You can see it right now. Bruce is working. That's the difference. See, on the very first day of filming, Steven Spielberg's shark sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It didn't really work all the time. It didn't work probably at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio news. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark worked well enough for a while there in the days of the So I really owe the shark a lot. That's true. Jaws became the world's very first summer blockbuster and made history. And it's not the only product out here that has made history. The show Murder, She Wrote, did a lot of filming to your right in this white house now at Chicken Ranch. It made history on the lot by being the longest running show to film here at Universal. Over 10 seasons of Murder, She Wrote filmed on our lot. That is a lot of murders and a lot of intrigue. This street, by the way, Colonial Street, is no stranger to murders and intrigue, especially the intrigue part. You may recognize this street from Netflix's Never Have I Ever. Mindy Kaling's show on Netflix does a whole lot of filming in pretty much every single one of these houses for Never Have I Ever. You'll also know this street as Wisteria Lane from Desperate Housewives. 
In fact, Susan Delfino's house was the yellow one to your left there. That was also where the Hardy Boys were located when they did the Hardy Boys television series in the 50s. And Nancy Drew's house is out here as well because they would flip-flop every week. There is a new Hardy Boys, by the way, on Hulu if you haven't seen it. The second season, it just came out a couple days ago. Most of these houses, they look like they are full homes, but they're also facades, right? These are still the fronts and sides of buildings. The only house that is partially practical is this house to your right. Edie Britt's house is a partially practical set, meaning we can film kind of inside and outside. But the rest of the houses, like this one to your right here coming up, have no insides. And it's actually pretty funny, this gray house here, there is a tree that grows right in the middle of that home. It's protected by the state of California, so we can't cut it down, so we just built the house around it. If you look through the windows, there's nothing going on in there except for that big old safe tree. You've also probably noticed that the streets inside of our backlot sets, like Little Europe and out here, are very windy. That's because we don't want you to see any intersections when we film. We want this neighborhood to look a lot bigger on camera than it is in person. Here it is in The Burbs, Cast of the Friendly Ghost. It was also in Pitch Perfect 3. Smash Mouth's All-Star Music Video. It is a very busy filming location. I could take the rest of the tour and just name all of the projects that had filmed out there. But I want to highlight all of the pieces of our back lot because every inch of our back lot is useful for filming. CSI filmed on CityWalk. These trees to your left and right have been used for filming. In fact, the movie Bird Box, starring Sandra Bullock, filmed in the trees to your left. She wandered through those trees blindfolded. You also saw those trees in the movie Wanderlust as well. Even this road we're driving on, uh, the television series 911 ended their last season with a big old car crash that happened right here on this road. They made it rain, they filmed at night, they brought their limousine up here, they took this corner way too fast and it flips over onto its hood and it slides, it's a really cool scene, and it's shot right here on this corner. now. <laughs> We're not going to crash the tram to recreate it, but we are going to take a hard corner here. Get your cameras ready to the right. I want to show you some more picture cars, okay? But especially for my Fast and Furious fans, get your cameras out on the right-hand side. You're going to see some cars from F9, like Dominic Toretto's Charger. And that NASCAR out there. I do love picture cars. And Hey, wait a second. Hey, hey, you can't have that car. That's a picture car. you got to bring that back. Don't put your glasses on. Wow. Somebody's going to have to catch those bad guys in theaters, April 27th. Uh, this, this area of Iraq, by the way, is filled with bad guys. None more bad than Mr. Norman Bates. Take a look to your right at the Bates Motel and the Psycho House from Alfred Hitchcock's classic thriller, Psycho. We all know what I'm asking. <laughs> Okay, we really are getting a lot of celebrities today. There's uh, Norman Bates, folks, uh, because he's in earshot. He's a great small business owner and entrepreneur, and works tirelessly for the Bates Motel. I mean, he does everything, the plumbing, the cleaning, the guest check-in and check-out. Yeah, he does, right in front of a tram full of people. She's fine, she's getting the express check-out. We should probably go, Dean until he notices us. And, uh, hey, Norman! Uh, Garrett from Tours, buddy. I got a tram full of witnesses. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, victims. To, nope. Uh, guests. Who? Come on, man. Please don't do that, Dean. Dean, come on. It's got to have a go, but... Uh, Norman, buddy, come on, man. We remember all the times we almost hung out? I don't, but it could have happened. Uh, please continue filming Car 4. It is going to be used in court. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, Okay. Hey, you know what? I promised you celebrities. I did not promise they weren't going to chase the tour with a giant knife. So that's no assumptions, okay? Now, we should be rude. We should see if Norman's mother is home. So take a look here to your left at the Psycho House. 
that was originally constructed by Hitchcock and his team. They say Norman's mother is still inside. And that amazing set sits next to this amazing set. This one designed by director Steven Spielberg for his movie, War of the World. is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around the vision that Stephen had. He said, yeah, to sit down to talk about the world of the world. But I thought, what if the 747 goes down right in a big neighborhood? Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You should do good. Thank you. Listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Okay. Got them closed? Robbie, get in. Get in. Okay, now we've talked a lot about little details, right? That airplane to your left is the biggest little detail. It is a real airplane that Steven Spielberg purchased just to make the movie War of the Worlds. It's not the only airplane that's been down out here. Take a look to your right at this big blue rectangle. That is where the movie Sully did a whole lot of filming. Evacuate. There it is there. That scene filmed over there. This scene filmed over there. All right, and I know it's difficult to tell that this filmed on the lot. This frame specifically was shot directly in front of that big blue rectangle. The reason is that is the largest freestanding blue screen in Hollywood. It's 50 feet long. Anything that's green or blue on camera, we can replace with computer-generated imagery. So for Sully, they built their airplane out there, they filled the concrete basin with water, then they used their computers to layer in the sky, the city, and the rest of the Hudson River. It is one of the most filmed-on locations on our lot. You'll be able to see it in Maverick when that comes out. It's also in Jurassic World. We're going to take it right here. Give a good look at that backdrop as we do. Stay seated and hang on to your belongings. This is the 10 minute warning for the end of the tour. About 10 minutes from the end. Again, it's still private property. Don't exit the tram. If you have an emergency, just pull that red cord. Uh, we're, uh, okay, usually that's the road we go down and, uh, sorry, one second. Uh, yeah, this is Garrett's tour. Okay, okay, great. Uh, okay, uh, we're being redirected, ladies and gentlemen. There, there apparently is a very valuable witness in the Federal Protection Program on our tra uh, tram right now. They're in car three, and they're wearing a VIP lanyard. Please keep them safe. Uh, they're apparently being chased by somebody super-duper dangerous, so we're just going to hide out, sir. We've got your back. Oh, this is not what I expected. Uh, okay. Don't worry, okay? You're in good hands, all right? Dean and I, we can do anything. And they're telling me we're going to meet with somebody in here. Uh, give us further instructions. Yeah. We won't charge you. Wow, well, whoever we're meeting has some serious fire. Like, oh, hi. Hey, yeah, this is here. Are you in the right spot? Yeah, actually, can you come the camera? Oh, great. Thank you very much. My name is Roman Pierce. Pleased to meet you. Our buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you in shock for a while. So we brought you in our secret spot. All right, look guys, we're gonna keep Shaw from finding you, but to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here, so put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone could give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in a minute.
what we doing. This is the race day after party. And the, where the, where the other? Roman Pierce. Roman Pierce. FBI, don't move. Bill, that's right, party's over. You know how long that took to iron this shirt, man? I'm, I'm not. You're under arrest right now. Right, let's just, just back up a little bit. I got you. It's lightweight. First of all, I don't work for you. Oh, really? Well, tell me, Roman, who do you work for? We don't work for nobody. Cop, I suggest you clear out of here, otherwise we can't guarantee your safety. Guarantee my safety? I'm the one holding the gun. Yeah, but mine's a whole lot bigger than yours. Hobbs, escort this novice out. Let's go, Cookie Puss. Got an ugly suit on, man. It's cheap. Somebody out there really pissed off Shaw. It's gonna get ugly fast. Yeah, don't worry. Lucky for you, our whole family will protect you. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Roman? You didn't shut off your phone, bro? I gotta call you back. I'm just, I'm gonna go to the side. See what I'm talking about? Call you back. Oh, man. It was on vibrate. Sean traced us. I just can't hold forever. Buddy, Roman, we're up. <sighs> Driver, move that vehicle. Okay. It's about to get real interesting. My Mona Lisa's all warmed up right next door. Say the beat of the family is stronger it is. You guys get good out there. And you're welcome to join our crew anytime. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with that high octane explosive finale, you have gone from looking for celebrities to becoming celebrities. You have survived Garrett's studio tour. Well done. Give yourselves a round of applause. 
Let's keep that applause going for Dean, our driver. Thank you, Dean. I have one last present for you as a thank you for being such a great audience. Look to your right. You've got the real Hollywood down there. You got Warner Brothers Studios, ABC Studios is that beige and green building. Universal is ever expanding, of course, to your right. This valley is where a lot of your favorite movies and TV shows come to life. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to visit me here at the tour. If you want to check out any of the movies I mentioned or any Universal movie, go to uphe.com for a full list and links of where you can get those films. I also recommend, of course, that you download the Peacock streaming service app. And for today, a big tip, you want to download the official Universal Studios Hollywood app. It is going to give you up to the minute wait times on rides like Secret Life of Pets, show times for shows like Water World, the live Sea War Spectacular. It also lets you know what time the park closes today. Now before we get in here, I do want to give a big round of applause to Universal Studios for over 100 years of movie magic. Without them, I have a very boring tour. Now you have one last job, ladies and gentlemen, it is to gather your belongings, watch your step as you exit the tram, return your 3D glasses into the blue bits to the left, but most importantly, it's to get back in that theme park and have some fun. Enjoy the rest of your stay here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of L.A. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, and good night!